Many of us who teach manifesting have this bad habit of oversimplifying the situation. We really want to encourage people to get into manifesting because, in truth, the basic principles which make manifesting work are actually simple. Whatever you focus on with deep feeling and strong faith will manifest. At the core, that is an incredibly simple process. It's a very incredibly simple situation. And the more we simplify this idea of manifesting, the more we can encourage people to give it a try. However, to be completely honest with you, there are some pitfalls that you have to watch out for when attempting to manifest your desires. And these pitfalls really do relate to the core process. And the key idea here, you've heard this before, you don't necessarily manifest what you want. You manifest the essence of who you are. And who you are can be described as the sum total of your beliefs. In manifesting, the intention is to focus on the idea that you want to manifest and have full confidence and faith that your intention will in fact manifest. This is one aspect of the belief that is required to make manifesting work. There are other beliefs which influence the process, which characterize the outcome that goes beyond what you are currently focusing on. Here's the example. Here's, here's the primary one. What you believe about yourself and your life is going to impact the results you get from manifesting to a huge degree. If you believe that everything goes wrong in your life, guess how that's going to impact your efforts to manifest any particular outcome? If you believe that everything goes wrong, then that means your manifestation will also go wrong. If that is the belief that you have gathered through the course of your life, and that is a subconscious focus within your mind, because your subconscious is perfectly aware of all your beliefs at all times. You may not necessarily be consciously aware of these beliefs, but your subconscious, where the power of manifesting comes from, is aware of those beliefs and takes those beliefs into consideration when manifesting your desires. So, what you believe about yourself. I am a good person, I do well, I am smart, I can pick the right person for me, all of these kind of ideas. If you have those beliefs, then you will experience the results of those beliefs in a positive way. If you have beliefs that say, oh, I'm always making the wrong choice, I'm always screwing things up, uh, I don't know why nothing ever works out for me, and all of these kind of negative beliefs, those negative beliefs will also impact your manifesting efforts. And so to truly get the best possible results from manifesting, you need to be aware of the entire scope of your beliefs as they relate to you, your life, the results you get from the things you do, and the situation in which you are attempting to manifest a specific outcome. If we Consider, okay, two different people. One person has had a lot of good experiences in relationships. Another person has had a lot of frustrating relationships in their life. They may both be doing the exact same thing in manifesting a new relationship. One's going to have a better outcome than the other, simply because of the beliefs that they take into that process. And so manifesting is not just the process we use. 
it's also what we bring into that process by virtue of who we are. So there's that level of thinking that you have to be aware of when you are manifesting the things that you want. One way to solve this problem, I guess you can call it, if you recognize that you do have limiting beliefs, you can manifest better beliefs. If you're the type of person who feels like, well, everything goes wrong in my life, then I would suggest you sit down and focus on manifesting a condition, a situation, a pattern that says everything goes right in my life. Everything goes my way. There was a time in my life when I had to make that change. And I felt that everything did go wrong in my life. And I knew I needed to change my belief about it. So I composed this little ditty. It sounded like a Disney song to me. And it was a little kid-like, but it was fun. And it allowed me to play with idea, that idea over and over and over again to the point where it started to actually take effect inside my mind. And the little song was, everything goes my way, my way. Everything goes my way, my way. Everything goes my way today. I am the one in charge today. There were a lot of variations of that, but it was just the idea of, I needed to change my belief that things went my way in order to make my manifesting efforts more effective. So that's just one idea. The concept of affirmations, affirmations are great as long as you can bring a level of confidence into the statements as much as you possibly can. But even weak statements can eventually work if you repeat them often enough. So the bottom line is if we use the manifesting process to manifest a better belief system that will improve your future manifesting efforts. So that's one of the pitfalls of manifesting. There's another pitfall that's very closely related to that. And that gets into the reason why you want to manifest a particular outcome. There are so many possible choices of things you can manifest for a positive reason. I don't think we need to go there. I want to manifest love in my life. I want to manifest abundance in my life. I want to manifest adventure in my life. I want to imagine peace and calm and tranquility into my life. Things that you would enjoy experiencing. These are very positive intentions to manifest. Every once in a while, we humans, from our limited perspective on things, make choices that may not always be the best choice for us. As an example, driving down the road, someone cuts you off in traffic, causes you to have to swerve to get out of their way or make some adjustment that you weren't planning on, it can be frustrating. If you let it go and say, okay, that was just a minor thing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to refocus my mind on a positive experience. Everything goes well for me and the future is bright and rosy. If that's how you respond, that is perfect. Many of us respond in a different way. We might respond with anger. We might even set an intention. That person's going to get something in return. I'm going to curse that person and cause them harm. That's not really a good choice of using the powers of manifesting. And that actually gets into the next pitfall that I was planning on. So I'm jumping ahead a little bit. But here's the idea with that. If that is your situation and something comes to you that isn't very pleasant, there's this whole idea of cause and effect. Some people call it karma. 
it's just like any other dynamic system in the universe. The laws of momentum, the laws of inertia, the laws of cause and effect going backwards and forwards, the, what was it, Newton's first law of motion, a body at rest will stay at rest or a body in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. And any force applied in one way is also applied in the other way. Um, trying to remember the exact wording of that. But um, every force applied has an equal but opposite reaction kind of thing. I'll have to look it up to see what the exact wording of that was. But in the world of manifesting, the energy and the power that we put out, or frequencies if you want to call it that, doesn't matter what terms you use, but what we put out into the universe will come back to us in one way or another. That's the basic principle that makes manifesting work. We are putting out intentions, feelings, backed by faith, and we are expecting th that law of cause and effect to bring the result that we intended to manifest into our lives. That is the primary way that manifesting works. We put out energy, we get back a result. Well, even outside of our manifesting efforts, we're always putting out energy. We're always putting out thoughts and beliefs. And we always have some effect on the world around us. Well, the law of cause and effect, the law of karma, whichever way you want to call it, says that whatever goes out will come back. And so as you're driving down the road and someone cuts you off, my way of looking at that is, okay, that is some negative energy that I put out maybe yesterday, maybe last week, I don't know. That one's out of my way now. Thank you for getting rid of that negative karma. That's burnt off now. That has been spent. I have a cleaner slate now than I did before. And then I just simply focus on creating a better pathway from that point on. That's my response. That's the response that I do recommend that most people take. When something bad happens, when something frustrating happens, allow that to be the payoff of old karma and let that go and focus on creating something better. That's the best way to approach it. In the topic of manifesting a particular outcome, if the intention behind a manifestation is to hurt somebody else, or even if it's not the intention, but if that is the consequence of creating the outcome you want, if creating the outcome you want causes someone else to be hurt in the process, that's karma that's going to come back to you one way or another. And so we really want to be open to infinite possibilities whenever we're manifesting any particular outcome. Another classic example, uh, this has happened to quite a number of people. They focus on manifesting money and they focus on manifesting money and they focus on manifesting money and they keep at it and they keep at it and they keep at it and then their favorite aunt dies and they receive an inheritance. They receive the money, but it was at the cost of someone else's enjoyment of life. Or a common thing today, a lot of people saying, well, I want to be in a relationship with this specific person and I don't care if it's the right thing or not. I want what I want and I'm going to do it. Okay, fine. That's your choice. You can do that. But recognize that if that relationship is not in that other person's best interest, you're creating negative karma that will eventually come back to you one way or another. So... There's this idea of karma that is also involved with our manifesting efforts, and it's a pitfall that we have to watch out for. Make sure that your intention behind all of your manifestations is something positive, and make sure that you are allowing the infinite universe that knows all to pick the perfect manifestation for you and your situation. So I'm going to let that go at that point. Um, the, the third pitfall that we have to watch out for 
is when we want to manifest a lot of different things. It's like, okay, I've got a list of 12 different things that I want to manifest in the next month. And you might sit down to focus on one of them in the morning. Two hours later, you sit and focus on another one of those. Another couple hours later, you sit down and focus on something else. In between these, you've got a few minor things that, okay, I'm only going to spend a minute on this. I'm only going to spend 30 seconds on that. I'm going to focus my mind on these 12 different things over the course of a day. The problem is, is that true focus means to be focused on one thing at a time. And yeah, many of us do feel like we are good at multitasking. We can focus on this for a while, then we focus on that for a while, then we focus on that for a while, and we get back to this, and it's like a juggler. A juggler throws up one ball, forgets all about that, focus on a different ball, and it's like as, as one hand is throwing up, the next one's about ready to throw, that one catches that, that catches the next ball, and they keep it all going, focusing on one thing at a time very quickly. If you're good at juggling, you know how long it takes to develop that ability. In manifesting, it takes a lot of practice and focus and developing that focus to a high level before you can truly focus on different things one at a time and still have them work out for you. If you try to focus on too much too soon, it kind of dilutes the focus. I mean, you truly, if you focus on one thing and one thing only, that's like applying a very sharp knife to cutting something. If you focus on three things at the same time, that knife is duller than it was, and it's a lot harder to cut through whatever you're trying to cut through. You want to keep your knife sharp. You want to keep your mind sharp in focus on one thing at a time as much as you possibly can. And yes, there will be times when something comes up and you really need to give that its focus for that particular moment. And then you go back and you start working on that major objective again. So I've explained three of the key pitfalls of manifesting here. One is the related beliefs that you bring into the manifesting process that will influence how that manifestation occurs. There's the idea of karma and the energies that we put out into the world will come back to us in one way. The more we can help other people, the more the universe is going to come back and help us. It's like the old saying, life is an echo. Whatever you put out, it's going to come back to you one way or another. If you put out loving words, then loving words are going to come back to you. If you put out kindness and helpfulness, then kindness and helpfulness will come back to you. That's another one of the pitfalls. Make sure that whatever you manifest has the intention to help and provide freedom and abundance, the things that you want for yourself. And then the third one, just make sure that you are as focused as you possibly can so that your manifestation can happen quickly. If you dilute the focus too much, you might diffuse the entire thing and it might all fall apart. So hopefully I've given you some things to think about. Hopefully I have helped you clarify your intentions and the practice that you give your manifesting ability. And until next time, be blessed, my friend.